consensus before the first fight was that Griffin was simply more trash than Roy Jones compactor. Roy Jones is a five to one favorite to prove that that was true the first time it would be true again the second time. And of course Griffin believes that he thrives and will continue to thrive on being underestimated. Jones lands a solid left hook to start the fight. Let me tell you, that first left hook hurt Griffin. And so does the second one. And Mercanti calls it a knockdown, saying that only the ropes kept Griffin up. And go. It's very apparent that Jones is coming out stronger this time. We didn't see that this from him for many rounds in the first fight. So now Griffin hoping in the back of his mind that Jones, by being so aggressive, will create opportunities for him. Montel's a classic counterpunch. Jones is looking for a first round knockout. He's not trying to set anything up with the jab, just firing power punches. Very important that Roy Jones keeps his right hand up as he throws those left hooks because he's wide open for a counter hook. That's what Griffin is looking for, although he hasn't really fired in return yet. That's the first one he oh, stopped. No, no, no. Let's go. Roy Double. has had a reputation of not taking chances, not wanting to get hit. He is taking chances, sticking his chin out there now. One thing about Roy Jones, you're going to land those big shots early in the first round. Go back to the body to make sure that this guy is not able to get his second win on you later on. Griffin shying away from the left hook feint there. Obviously, and for good reason, extremely cautious now about Roy Jones' left hook leads. Jones lands another left hook there. Griffin starts to look for counter opportunities, but still very much on the defensive with 50 seconds to go in round number one. Huge round for Roy Jones so far. Well, Roy Jones is playing the fainting game, and Griffin is benefiting by it. Whoa, what a left hook. What a left hook. Second Over knockdown of the round. Hook. That was a leaping left hook, and Griffin may not survive it. He's got trouble. Nine. And that's that. Jones gets his vindication via a first round knockout. And it was a left uppercut. Unbelievably quick left hand shots. A barrage of them in round one by Jones. And he finishes off Griffin with a half hook, half uppercut, a la Oscar De La Hoya that landed on the button. You know, the good thing about Roy Jones, you talk about the lack of a left jab. He sees his targets, he doesn't need a jab. He's quick enough to go there without even taking the jab. I never thought I would ever hear you say of a fighter that he doesn't need a jab. When you've got that kind of quickness, hey, look, as long as you got the quickness, you don't need to throw anything beforehand. He doesn't need a jab. I'll never say it again either. <laughs> This is well deserving. No one has done that to Griffin before. This is several months of anger and frustration being vented all at once in public by Roy Jones. He couldn't have written for himself a more satisfying fight script than this one. Well, this is what a champion does. There have been a few occasions in boxing history when champions have lost their titles on disqualifications and have come back to regain the title, to assert their championship caliber, and that's exactly what Roy Jones did tonight. This reminds you of Joe Lewis's revenge against Max Schmelich because of the emotion that Roy brought to it. Yeah, he, this, this was the most important fight of Roy Jones' life. In his mind now, this will wipe out what happened last March. And I think in the minds of most boxing fans as well. I agree. I can't remember last, but the last fight. All right, here's the first punch of the fight that hurt Griffin. That was the very first left in the fight. Now 
shot. Here the first knockdown. Right on the button. It's about not recovering. And he put the left glove down on the canvas, so Mercanti didn't need to use the rule regarding the ropes. He had a knockdown on the basis of the fact that Griffin puts this left glove right on the canvas, right there. Wise decision by Arthur McKinney. Wise and a good decision. call. Not many referees would have had that kind of courage, you know. But he properly spotted that Griffin put his glove on the canvas. Could have ruled it a knockdown on the basis of the ring ropes holding Griffin up, too. Mistake by Griffith to try and punch with a true puncher. End of fight here. Ooh, there was that leaping left uppercut. Another look at the punch that finished it. He landed that flush and you saw Montel trying desperately to get up. But he just couldn't get his legs underneath. Oh, no, this, that hook, oh, the uppercut bent his neck backwards. Down the spine, you don't want to get up from those shots. Come back another day. No longer unbeaten Montel Griffin. With shocking suddenness and with shocking ease, Roy Jones gets his revenge, and he fainted there, and Griffin left himself open for the punch. You know, it's strange that Roy Jones would have that kind of power at that weight class. This guy is capable of being a good heavyweight. So you don't think that he's completely off his rocker when he talks about fighting the Holyfields and Moors of the world? No, no, you pack on that kind of weight and keep your quickness and power, he can go up. How high would he have to go? 205, 210? If he can get to be 200 pounds, that's all he needs just to establish himself as I am a big man, the rest he has. At 200 pounds, would he ever be a threat to be heavyweight champion of the world? Great threat, because he's fast. Hey, when you've got speed, the other things, they just come to you. And so you think the punching power would go up with him as well? No doubt about it, because you get the right conditioner, you get you in a proper shape, you get the proper sparring, he can do it. I was shocked that he could do that to this guy who's fought guys 180 and 185 pounds throughout his career, Griffin has. What about trying to take punches from punchers like Moore and Holyfield? I'd like to see one of those guys try and hit Roy Jones. I don't think it can happen. Now you see me, now you don't. Might not be able to find him. All right, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the particular. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Arthur Mercanti calls a halt to the bout at 2 minutes and 31 seconds of round number one following knockdown number two. The winner, now a four-time world champion, and once again the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr.